Hi, my name is Ying Gao and welcome to Dr. Gao's classroom. I'm a professional philosopher and I love classical Chinese poetry. I have been teaching and translating classical Chinese poetry for the last few years. I'd love to share my knowledge on the subject with you. Your enjoyment is my command. Today, I'm going to translate another poem in the form of Chang Xiang Si or Missing You Forever. I have translated and analyzed three poems in this form by the great Tang Dynasty poet Li Bai and a poem by another Tang poet named Bai Ji Yi. The form of Chang Xiang Si was firmly established by the late Tang Dynasty. However, this form flourished during the Shang Dynasty starting from the 10th century. Many great poets of the Shang Dynasty compose the poems in this form. Today, I'm going to translate one of the best known poems in this form by a poet named Lin Bu. Do you know any poem in the form of Chang Xiang Si? If you do, would you like me to talk about the poem? I would love to do that. Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you are new to my channel, please check out my other videos on classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, or medical literature. If you like the content of these videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on this subject. So if you would like to read original text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Now, let's see what we know about Lin Bu. Lin Bu was born in 967 AD, only seven years after the founding father of the great Shang Dynasty, Zhao Kuangyin, usurped the crown from the young emperor of Hou Zhou or Later Zhou in 960. The Later Zhou was one of the many kingdoms set up by the governor generals after the Great Tang Dynasty collapsed in 907 AD. The Later Zhou only lasted nine years. At the time, the Emperor Zhao Kuangyin was still fighting the remaining kingdoms and wars between different kingdoms brought a huge loss to human lives. This is a violent and chaotic time. No wonder Lin Bu refused to take any office. Lin Bu traveled extensively along the Yangtze River and the Huai River when he was young, but settled by the West Lake located in today's Hangzhou after he turned 40. According to Sun Kuo's Meng Xi Bi Tan, or the Aces by the Dream Creek, Lin Bu retreated to Gu San or Mount Gu of Hangzhou. He raised the two cranes. He often released the crane, and the crane would fly up to the blue clouds for a long time, and then Lin Bu would call them back. He also sailed in a small boat on the West Lake visiting the various Buddhist temples there. If there were a visitor, his young servant would release one of the crane, and Lin Bu would return home once he saw the crane. Since cranes were regarded as immortal birds by the religious Taoists, and many of the Taoist immortals were depicted as riding a crane to rise to heaven, like in this picture, Lin Bu's little hut by Mount Gu became a Taoist retreat after he passed away and buried there. Lin Bu also planted a lot of cherry trees around his little hut and composed many poems praising the beauty and fragrance of cherry blossom. According to the introduction to a collection of Lin Bu's poem published in 1053 AD, Lin was not married all his life and had no children. It was reported that he took the cherry tree as his wife and treated his crane like his own children, hence the phrase of 
七妹子贺。All take a territory as wife and cranes as children became a fixed phrase to praise a person who rejected the secular happiness of having a family to pursue a spiritual life of a Taoist hermit. It was really funny that nearly two hundred years later, a scholar of the late Shang Dynasty named Lin Hong. Known for his poetry during 1241 to 1252 A.D., claimed that he was the son of Lin Bu. Then he realized that Lin Bu died more than 200 years ago, and then claimed that he was a descendant of Lin Bu. Furthermore, a Japanese family also claimed that they were Lin Bu's descendants. And their ancestor Lin Jingyin migrated to Japan during the Yuan Dynasty in the 14th century A.D. This Japanese family was known in Japan for making delicious mantou or steamed buns. This Japanese family got in touch with their distant kins in China and had a family reunion at Hangzhou in 1986. And they have been performing ancestor sacrifices to Lin Bu ever since then. What an amazing world! A professor from Beijing Jiao Tong University named Fang Yu posted an article on the Chinese blog said Xin Lang disputing these claims by digging out the historical records from the Shang and Ming dynasties. And argue that Lin Bu simply had no children and did not adopt any son to continue his lineage. I'll post the link to Professor Fang's blog down below. I won't take this dispute about Lin Bu's lineage seriously. It was a common practice during Imperial China to claim oneself as a descendant of a famous historical figure. To elevate one's social status, the most famous one is the claim made by the Tang royal family that they were the descendants of the legendary Lao Tzu, the Taoist philosopher from fifth century BC. They even gave Lao Tzu many titles, including Tai Shang Xuan Yuan Huang Di. The ultimate mythical emperor. <laughs> Even they acknowledge that Lao Tzu is a mythical figure. Anyway, whether Lin Bu ever had children or not, he probably was in love during his early years of wandering around the Yangtze and Huai River. One of his best-known poem is a love poem in the popular form of. Tang Xiang Si, or missing you forever. After we read this poem, you would understand why I'm so sure that he was at least once deeply in love with someone. Now, let me read the poem in Chinese first. Wu San Qing, Yue San Qing, Liang An Qing San Xiang Song Ying, Sui Zi Li Bie Qing. 君泪盈，妾泪盈，罗带同心结，未成。江边潮已平。Now let's look at the first part of the poem. 吴山青，月山青，两岸青山相送迎，谁知离别情。吴 refers to the state of 吴，山 means mountain. Qing means spring. Yue refers to the state of Yue. Shan means mountain again. Qing means spring again. Wu and Yue refer to the regions used to be the state of Wu and Yue of the Zhou Dynasty between the 12th century to the 5th century BC. Liang means two. An means bank. Qing means spring. Sun means mountain. Xiang means each other. Song means see off. 
Yang means great. Shui means who. Zhi means understand. Li Bie means separation. Ting literally means feelings or emotions. Here it is quite clear that it refers to the sorrow the lovers felt about their pending separation. So David and I translate the term as sorrow. So the four lines are translated as The mountains of Wu are green. The mountains of Yu are greener. These green mountains on each side of the river greet each other and then see each other off. Who understands the sorrow of separation? Jin Lei Ying, Chie Lei Ying, Luo Dai Tong Xin Jie Wei Cheng, Jiang Bian Chao Yi Ping. Jun means you, Lei means tear, Ying means full of something. Here it refers to the eyes full of tears. So we translate the term with lay as tearful. Qie is a self-reference here, so we translate it as I. Lay means tear again, ying means full again. Luo is a thin translucent silk. I have made a short video about the different kinds of silk. Here's the link if you would like to know about luo. Dai means Belt, Tong Xin Jie refers to lovers' knot. It is a common token lovers exchange with each other and one on their waist or on their belt. Wei means haven't. Cheng literally means complete, but here it is used to indicate the lovers' knot haven't tied up yet. So we translate it as tied. Jiang means River, Dian means bank, Chao means tide, Yi means already, Ping means level with something. Here it means the tide rise to the level of the bank, meaning it is time for the shape to sail off and for the man to leave. So the four lines can be translated as, You are tearful, I am tearful. We haven't tied the knot in our silk belts, and the tide is already halfway up the river bank. This poem used a unusual way to tell the story. It starts with a man traveling down the Grand Canal across the ancient land of Wu and Yue, missing his love left behind. Then the poet goes back to a scene when the man was about to start his journey and bidding farewell from his love. The poet assumed the woman's voice telling the man that she would be waiting for him to come back. The tragedy is that the poet knew that the man is not going to come back, just like the mountains in this ancient land that have greeted and so off people leaving their loved ones behind and never came back for thousands of years. This is a love poem, but it is also a poem about the terrors Lin Bu experienced during his life. Lin Bu was 10 years old when the ruler of his home state Wu Yue Guo surrendered to the Emperor Zhao Kuangyin. As you can see from this map, there are many little kingdoms established after the Tang Dynasty fell apart. Lin Bu's home state was the small state indicated by the blue star, but it was the last one to surrender to the Song Emperor. To save his people from suffering the terrors of war, the king of Wu Yue did not put up a fight and surrendered peacefully in 978 AD. We don't know Lin Bu's family background except that he and his brothers were all well educated. Considering how expensive it was to send one's children to school during the war tone period, we can safely assume that his family must be pretty well off. 
Maybe his ancestors were high rank officials with either the Tang Dynasty or the previous Wu Yue Guo. This would explain why he refused to serve the newly established Song cult. We also don't know why he refused to marry. Maybe he lost the love of his life during the war. Maybe he was delusioned to humanity that he did not want to have any children. Well, we would never know. But at least he got his friend and the crane and the cherry trees for company. And he left so many beautiful poems for us to enjoy today. Well, this is for today. I'm planning to translate a few more poems in the form of Tang Xiang Si. Let me know if you have any poem you would like me to translate. If you are new to my channel, please check out my other videos on classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, or medical literature. If you like the content of these videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on these subjects. If you would like to read this original text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you next time.